Hi everyone, today we'll take a look at the Volvo V50. The information in this video is also applicable to the S40 and C30. This Volvo V50 is the station wagon variant. The V stands for versatility and the S for sedan. The sedan for this model is the S40 and there is also a small coupe in the form of a C30. Technical information is similar for all these body types and engines are shared between these models. First things first, these cars belong to the second generation and were built between 2004 and 2012. There is however one generation V50, which is the continuation of the first generation V40. The V40 was Volvo's smaller wagon for the 1990s. In 2007 there was a facelift in which measurements, the interior and the front were altered. The faster engines got a performance upgrade. These engines were mostly petrol powered units. The 1.6 and the 1.8, the 2 liter, the 2.4 liter 5 cylinder and the 2.5 liter 5 cylinder with a turbo that was fitted to the top of the range T5 model. Only the T5 had 4 wheel drive. All the other engine types had front wheel drive. After the 2007 facelift there was also an FFV or fuel flexible vehicle with a 1.8 liter engine that was replaced in 2009 with the 2 liter 4 cylinder. If you wanted a diesel you had 3 choices. The 1.6, the 2 liter and the 2.4 5 cylinder D5. In 2010 the 2 liter diesel was replaced with two smaller displacement engines that had more performance a 150 and a 177 horsepower variant. The diesels were standard equipped with a particle filter and the diesels only had front wheel drive. Technically a lot of these engines came from Ford. At the time of production Volvo was owned by Ford. This meant that lots of components were exchanged between the brands. The Ford Focus ST has the T5 engine from Volvo for instance. And the chassis of the Volvo S40, V50 and C30 are from Ford. So it has quite a nice driving experience. Now let's focus on the strong and some of the weaker points of this car. The strong points are, in my opinion, it has an original design. These cars are very comfortable long distance cruisers. Overall the driving pleasure because of its Ford DNA. Cars that were built in 2007 sometimes suffer from problems with its ESP. The root cause of this problem lay in the ABS unit from Bosch. Volvo replaced these parts usually free of charge. So if you see an ESP light on the dash, you know where to check first. Make sure that the garage fixes this problem for you. Some of the 5 standards had the problem with the crankcase venting unit. This can be combated with a new version of the oil house filter. The old version is recognizable on the ripped hose. If you keep on driving with a whistle coming from the engine bay, this will lead to serious engine damage. The venting of the crankcase will then happen through the crankshaft bearings. This will lead to extreme pressure on the crankshaft and will eventually lead to a broken engine. The auxiliary cylinder of the clutch will sometimes leak oil. This cylinder is part of the thrust bearing. If you need to replace this bearing, it's also smart to replace the clutch as well, since this part needs to be detached to replace the bearing anyway. There are some reports of jittering of the car due to fuel pressure sensor that is almost due for replacement. The sensor itself costs between 70 to 80 euros and it will cost you about 15 minutes to replace. Replacing this sensor will prevent all kinds of jittering problems with your car. If you encounter a broken drive shaft by using the maximum steering angle, you cannot replace this shaft by buying this part. You will have to need to replace the whole front axle. On the left side it will cost you about 460 euros and on the right side it will cost you about 510 euros at your Volvo dealer. The four cylinder diesels, the 1.6 and the 1.8 version, with the particle filter have sometimes the tendency to throw sludge into the oil during regeneration. This will cause the oil level to exceed the maximum. The service interval for the particle filter is 120,000 km. If this interval is ignored, then the filter needs to regenerate even more 
and this will aggravate the problem further. In certain situations, the engine will suck up oil through the crankcase ventilation unit. This will cause your engine to behave strangely. Only remedy would be to check your oil level regularly and do not refill oil to its max and replace the particle filter on time of course. During a few years the distribution chain of the 4 cylinder Volvo engines had an interval of 240,000 km. Other years Volvo changed the interval to 140,000 km. Your dealer can tell you more about this. Always check if the chain is already replaced with cars that have higher mileages. Thanks for watching the buying review of the Volvo V50, S40 and C30. If you find these reviews useful then subscribe to my channel to keep up to date with buying review information of the most desirable cars on the market.